Well, welcome back. Another show that we need to get done is John Dowling's back with all of his intel that he's been gathering from around the world. Hey, John, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good, mate. Uh, how are you holding up? All right. Bad head cold, but not the end of the world. It's not something that, you know, I seem to be susceptible to head colds, I think, because I'm around my my uh, brother's kids a lot. And, you know, kids are always bringing something back. Mm. John, there's been tons going on since we talked last time. So I'm hoping to shed some light on some of the subjects that have been we're getting questions about. I know you're always the uh, the main man to go there for that. So I don't know where you want to kick it off today. Where would you like to go first? Well, I appreciate the vote of confidence. Thank you. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's always, a, uh, I know my viewers and your viewers enjoy when we banty back and forth because we have a good time, but we also get the information out. And that's obviously what we're here to do at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, well, I would, it's, that's a, that's a great question where to start because there's just so much information. It's almost difficult to try to you know pinpoint one thing but if i were to start with something i would start with iraq and you know yeah. right now that sudani is in dc you got trump over in new york which one we don't know uh dealing with the whole nonsensical court stuff right so you got parallel things going on but yeah. what i thought was interesting is and i know most of our viewers know this but we have to say it for posterity he's not meeting with the biden he's meeting with somebody you know in name only with with that right but he's met with the uh, you know, Department of Defense. I put on our telegram, he's been shaking hands and kissing babies and doing all the stuff that you have to do as a part of formality for Iraq to come back internationally. So he's in DC for the entire week. Um, he's working on getting the strategic framework. That, that's the entire dossier of documents, which houses the hydrocarbon gas law, the taxes and tariffs at the borders, uh, you know, closing off the currency auctions, right? So they're not living on the dollar anymore, the deep state on both sides, right? It's yeah. uh, it's the port of FA, it's getting all the bridges and roads and reconstruction and all that going. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So he's, he's setting the tempo this week by doing in DC. Then he goes back to Baghdad next week, as we understand it, to meet with Erdogan, president of Turkey, who's actually going to sign off on the oil and gas law and all the other stuff to make it real. And Erdogan plays a role because, again, you've got the Kurds, who are the largest faction within Iraq, uh, the oil credits that need to happen. They're the biggest people to satisfy because they kind of got screwed out of this three-year budget. So they, they need recompense somewhere. So Erdogan is the key to getting all that done. Then, as we understand it, he goes the following week, which is the 29th, I want to say, end of the month, basically. And he goes to the WEF, which we know are the bad guys, but you got to go you got to play the stupid game that's why he's in dc in the first place sure. so he goes to wf to tell them that he has every intention to come back internationally don't forget janine the middleman between the un and iraq is the uh the the do-gooder you know middleman uh, corrupt person uh foreign relations her tenure ends sometime in may so she's already said on record that we've said before on last on previous shows that she wants um <clears throat> she wants iraq to be part of her legacy so she's going to turn on the purchasing power, which is like flipping on the switch. So, you know, you got all that going on. But what's also really, I don't know if exciting is the right word, but, but uh, intriguing, interesting might be another way to put it, is you and I talked a lot, right, offline, online about Iran attacking Israel. They've now done yeah. that. Israel has now already stated that the next move they're going to make is they're going to hit the secret nuclear power plants, Right. Now, some people were surprised they hadn't done it already, but a smart leader never telegraphs their playbook of when they're going to do it. What we're hoping is that they're going to wait until um, Erdogan comes into town and he goes to the WF Sudani to get all this you know, written and done and dusted. Then they'll make their attack. So within the next, we'll call it two weeks, could be a week, who knows, right? But somewhere in that framework, because then when that's done, then the prophecy of Kim Clement, days to weeks to Dinar. So this looks to be, now that we're seeing in optically it happening right in front of us, it, this is, it's coming to an end. That's the good thing. We're seeing this come to an end right in front of our eyes. It's now just details playing themselves out. But that's a big piece, I think, is a good place to start. Yeah, it was interesting because the Iranians, they, uh, they issued a statement saying, we now consider this matter closed about the bombing, you know? So if the Israelis are going to continue the hostilities, I would imagine that's just distraction. And don't forget, Iran have never invaded anybody. If you look at it, the history of the country, I mean, it is quite clear that they don't want to go to war. So these whispers and rumors, I mean, it was quite clever how they 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 did that attack. You know, they're in retaliation for one of their um, 
their their fields being bombed and they um they launched quite a clever attack using these drones which split off and took the air fire away from the Israeli targets. But again, it could have been way worse. It's just getting the idea of okay, there's there's trouble brewing, the Iranians are doing this, the Israelis are retaliating. But I mean, I don't think the Iranians are looking for trouble, to be honest. I think they're just, you know, sometimes you, you gotta push back if you're being pushed and bullied a bit. Um, but I'm watching it. I, I'm not concerned that's gonna explode into anything major than uh you know a little bit of you said this and my dad's bigger than your dad sort of thing again the mainstream media is pushing everybody into believing that there's going to be um a much more elevated incident coming out of the middle east but at the end of the day the good guys don't want this um with Netanyahu, he's playing a very strange game because the israelis international reputation now is really really flawed there was another story that's interesting john um there was a Palestinian doctor that was based in the UK. He was called to Berlin to testify about what he saw that was going on on October the, what was it, October 7th during the attacks. And when he got to Berlin, they held him for three and a half hours and denied him entry and then said, if you send any testimony, even if it's by video or a transcript, it's going to be considered an act of illegal in Germany. But he, uh, they sent him back. They wouldn't let him testify as to what's going on. So Israel are playing a very strange game at the moment. But again, this is probably distracting. Everyone's watching what's going on there. But we know that Sudan is in the USA doing his contracts, getting his stuff placed and ready to, to pull the trigger on some major, major contracts on, on infrastructure, um, sewerage, electrical plants, um, roads, schools, hospitals, all of these things, you know, to rebuild this country. So where's the money going to come from? It's quite obvious how close we are now, in my opinion. I agree. And <clears throat> you know, Mahoney, that uh, Iran is just playing the role that they were told to play. It's all a script. Yeah. When you, yeah. you know, there, people don't, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people don't seem to make the connection that it really is scripted. They think that what they're seeing is really real and it's not. Nothing is as, as it seems, right? This is all a matrix script. And so Iran's, you know, playing their part. Israel's doing likewise, right? This is all foretold, you know, and, and, you know, it's a fight between good and evil, as it always is, right? But, you know, the cabal and the elites are all putting their plans together to try to make it look one way when it's really going to go an entirely different way. So, yeah, I mean, none of these sides, these countries really want this whole thing. I, I don't think we're going to see World War III. That's what they want it to look like. It's, yeah. you know, Trump is allowing this to go to a precipice and then pull people back. You know, it's it's to wake as many people up as possible who are still out there thinking that, we still live in the 1990s and everything is hunky dory, you know, and they can't make the connection that they see the stock market going up, yet they see gas and groceries exponentially going higher. I mean, there's there's a lot of people like that, you know, majority sadly are like that, who still don't, you know, cognitive dissonance, they still can't make that connection. And so yeah, all yeah. of these events are necessary precepts to bring that to, to a boil, right? So, but that's, that's got me very, uh, Excited and intrigued is a good word to use, I think. Good word to use that we're coming to the end of this long usurpation of, of this road, finally making its its exit way. It's just a matter of, of time now. And then uh, the other thing I'm watching too, uh, Dave, is that um, recently you saw that uh, Zimbabwe has made a move yeah. to back their dollars with gold from the RTG to the ZIG. Now, we got some new information that I waited to share just for you. Oh, cool. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what a what a what a stalwart guy you are and you are but no um we just got this a couple of days ago and put it <clears throat> excuse me on our telegram which is to say that we don't like to put out stuff unless we're really sure of it right we want to vet we want to vet it out and so because people like to see the facts and see visual evidence of it which i understand so what we confirmed is that um, we knew that the dollars were going to be backed by gold, but we weren't sure how the Zim bonds were going to play, you know, into that, how they were going to work it out. And Chamisa put a picture a couple of days ago, which, as I said, I posted on Telegram. And it shows that uh, once he's back in power, which looks to be in somewhere between August, September, when their elections go, remember, they put Starlink satellites up in July over there slated to make sure that election, election interference, much like here, can't get a foothold, that they have a backup proof of who voted for whom, right? Because yeah. Chamisa is the people's president there, just like Trump is here. Countries copy each other. 
But the point is now we have confirmed that the Zim bonds are tied in with the Zig dollar. So it'll be one in the same. So they will yeah. all go, you know, one to one in gold. Well, it was also strange that the photograph they released when I first saw it, it looked like the 100 trillion note. It was a blue and white note. So the whole thing that we're doing looks exactly <laughs> Excuse me. I thought it was. <clears throat> so there's subtle hints like that um, that we've been picking up along the way. Um, Zimbabwe now is looking like it is going to be backed by, you know, they've got so much they could use, but the gold is definitely number one. Um, we know the country's riddled um, with raw materials. It's one of probably, if not the richest country in Africa, I would imagine is Zimbabwe. Um, Without question. The world, yeah. yeah. Well, they've got they've got minerals, absolutely everything you could possibly want, and strange things that you wouldn't even wouldn't even imagine, like iron ore and things like this. That you know, people need cobalt and zinc Rhodium. and all of these, and even salt. You know, they've got some extensive salt mm -hmm. mines there that it's very high quality, which is used in all sorts of manufacturing processes. But I saw that, I saw that, and once this president gets back in, He's um he's going to implement a lot of these changes and hopefully bring them out of poverty as quickly as possible. Well, he will. And there's another thing, David, that's important to denote about these new Zig dollars is they have QR codes on them. Oh, really? Which would to me oh. would yes, which to me would suggest that that's part of the new quantum digital financial system that that's already being queued up. Yeah. So that's that's a very important uh, component to the piece of the puzzle as well. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Nobody really understands about the Zims and and the um, those Zim bonds. We'll go back to that in a minute. Let's stay on. Let's stay on Iraq then, John. Um, sure. What do you think the next most important thing we need to look for as this story unfolds? What's the next key marker stone? Have you got something in, in the back of your head thinking? Okay, I'm waiting for that. Well, I'm just as I said before. I'm to 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 reiterate. I'm watching for Israel to make their quote grave quote mistake, which isn't a mistake at all. It's a script. I'm watching for them to hit those power plants because that will signal days to weeks for the dinar. Uh, I'm watching Sudani. You know, it, it was a good thing that, you know, when that attack happened in Israel, excuse me, in Iran, well, Israel from Iran, I should say, on Saturday, that Sudani was on a plane to make sure he got out of the country. <clears throat> There's yeah. a lot of people speculating that they might not even have the meetings in D.C. if he couldn't get out because they knew it was coming. So thankfully, he made it out in time that, that you know, God is protecting every part of this process. Uh, to, to be facilitated. So I'm watching over the next two weeks to see him finish in DC, finish back in, in Baghdad, and then go to the World Economic Forum end of the month. And I'm watching somewhere in between that time frame when Israel will strike, because I think that everything coordinates. And remember, Jean's, Janine's time is up in May. So yeah. this looks to me to be coming into the focus much sooner than later. Yeah, like you say, getting Elon satellites up there so they can guarantee they can monitor what's going on with the real election results because that's the biggest worry in a, a lot of people's heads is how do we know that the the elections it is going to be conducted with honor and 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 uh, truth? It's the same thing for the U.S. coming up. You know, we got such an interesting situation. Trump's back in back in New York. Is it New York where they're holding where the, the legal things going on? You said New York. Yeah, right? he's he's. He's downtown in the, I think, the Battery Park District, near the Financial District. That's where the courthouses are. I, I saw him rolling up there, and there was a lot of his supporters outside, all chanting, four more years, four more years. It's it's quite comical, actually, that if you do run into people, that they say, I don't know what you're talking about. No, this is normal. You know, look how much persecution he's being put under. I think the only guy I know who's ever been pers persecuted more, really, would be Jesus, because he's he's just constantly under this barrage of fake assault charges, fake corruption charges. I mean, the bank that he was involved with, they said, no, he paid us back. What's the problem? You know, when's that ever happened before? They're absolutely terrified mm -hmm. of him getting back in. And the tr it's embarrassing for them saying, you know, oh, we're going to do this next and that next. I think it's embarrassing. I think it's backfiring on him, David. It's working towards Trump's advantage, which I think he he already knew and set it up this way. And you see him going down to you know the bodegas in Harlem and yeah. you know meeting with you know African Americans who are because you know many people can relate to being persecuted and feeling uh, you know judged or ostracized. And I think that that court of a public opinion is actually working in his, again in his favor with a lot of different types of people. And uh, that, I think that was all done on purpose by design to, you know, gin this up as it uh, as it gets closer to the election. 
One question I wanted to ask you from a geopolitical front, Dave, is two different things, <clears throat> which is one, because there's a lot of different opinions on it and, and nobody on the outside world except for you know five to 10 people in the military know the answer to this, right? But are we gonna actually have an election in November, do you think in the States? And two, you know, uh, yeah. go ahead. No, 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 let's hear go the ahead. second part. No, no. Well, the second question, this is one that I'm actually going to be asking uh, Derek Johnson next month. We just had a show with him and he was fantastic. He just met with Trump in mar lago about a week and a half ago. He was there. Oh, he, nice. He met, with, he met with President Trump. He met with, you know, uh, Cash Patel and some other people that are in the know there. And he gave us as much information as he was able to give, given, you know, what he's allowed to share. But <clears throat> one of the questions I'm going to be asking him next month, and I talked to his manager about this yesterday, is the whole su uh, subject of Mike Flynn. You know, is he on the good side? Is he on the bad side? I think he's playing a role, but he's he's doing a very good job of sending mixed messages to the point where people are a little bit confused about where his allegiances are. And I was just wondering what your take on that was. Yeah, it's an interesting because I I've done a couple of interviews with with um with Flynn. Um, hmm. I find him very credible, Mike. To be honest, because. You know, I can tell when someone's bullshitting me. There's there's signs, and they'll stumble, and they won't remember. And then once you tell a lie, there's another lie. But General Flynn's been consistent with what he's been saying. You know, he, he always pulls out his his um his copy of the the Declaration and the the Bill of Rights. That's how he lives his life. We saw what happened to him as it unfolded during his um his witch hunt, and it destroyed his life. Basically, you know, he lost his credibility. He had to sell up everything more or less to pay his legal fees. And what has he been doing since then? He's been trying to clear his name. He's been fighting for patriots. He's been fighting for Americans to, to understand what the, what the Constitution means to them. So I find him credible. Um, I'd, I, you know, people have said, oh, he's, he's a bit wishy-washy and he's gone the other way. I mean, I haven't heard him say anything that I would have considered. Well, hang on a second. That's a 180 and what you've been talking about. Maybe I've missed his whatever the interview was, but um, I like the guy because uh, what is he talking about, John? He doesn't he doesn't talk about anything but making America what it's supposed to be. You know, people right. in, in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, you know, no taxation without representation. Um, at the moment, the American people are riding a storm where the only people that are doing well out of it is the, is the super elites, you know, $15, $18 now for a small punnet of strawberries in California. Gas prices gone through the roof. Food prices, and when you, you know, the, the food that's out there that they make affordable to the average family is just basically processed junk. You know, if you want to try to eat healthy in the States, now California, I, I hear, is the worst, which is where you are. So I like the guy. All he talks about is trying to get America back on track to get a decent. Um, political system that will work for the American people back on there. He's not asking for anything else. He's not calling for revolution. All he's doing is saying, listen, if you're American, we were given these rights. This is what the whole country was founded on. And this is how far it's gone. It's got so bad that the uh, the Rothschilds and, and the other major banking houses are manipulating the system, manipulating the stock market. They're all making millions, and who's paying for it? It's it's the average Joe and 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 Annie in the street that has to pay for them. Look, I mean, how many? We I've forgotten the actual number. How many billions they sent to the Ukraine for what? And then there's no there's no invoices. They can't say, okay, you sent us twenty five billion, and we've spent that on hospitals and treating the wounded. But they haven't. I mean, I've seen videos now, John, it's like 16, 17, 18 year old kids that have been sent to the front and they, they, they don't know what's going on. The only thing that they know is TikTok. So there they are in their uniforms, all getting ready to be sent up for training and they're TikToking themselves. Well, Here I am in my uniform. Um, I mean, look, look at the political leadership that the US is under now. It's nobody on the international arena has any respect for the Biden administration. The only person that's kissing his ass is Zelensky. Yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. just so outlandish and such a comedy sketch now that you'd have to be absolutely living in some sort of drug-infused fantasy world to believe that the Biden administration has got any good intentions for the USA. The homeless problem, the veteran problem. You know, they could have solved that 25 times with the money they gave to the Ukraine, 
And it's, right. you know, that what are they trying to do? Bankrupt Putin? Bankrupt Russia? It's a, an impossible task. It's like trying to find fairies at the bottom of the garden. It's just, a, it's never going to happen. Putin's way more smarter than any of these guys. Plays a very oh, yeah. clever game. And now the BRICS economy is all coming online, all got joining hands together. You know, Iran is now, they're very friendly with Russia. I can absolutely see Russia saying this and don't push it. Don't wake the bear. <laughs> don't wake the bear. So very interesting time that's going on. And Iraq is um, a fantastic example of that because look what happened. It's been war-torn for what, 25 years? The, the American presence has been there? It's about that, isn't it? I think it's over 30 now, yeah. 30 years, you know? They pulled all the troops out, but the country's in total disarray because they took out the leadership. When Saddam was in charge, at least... People were, you know, they knew what was going on. They knew where things stood. Yes, there was a lot of atrocities took place, but the majority of the people lived quite peacefully. You had a good education system. The healthcare was good. Now the country came in, bombed the shit out of it. You know, people are lucky to have running water in the homes in some of the remote places. Mm -hmm. So it absolutely shows that things have to change. Iraqis don't want to be looking over the shoulder and worried about going down the market to get some vegetables and a bomb going off. And I don't believe half of the stuff that they tell us is true. You know, a a, frac a faction group of Shiites blew somebody up. These people are not going to blow up their own brothers and sisters. You know, I mean, it could happen. It did happen. But we know that majority of the, all of these people, they just want to live in peace. It's the same with Israel and it's the same with Palestine. Do you think the average Israeli guy in the, in the house is saying, listen, today I can't come. I've got to go and make bombs and blow up some <laughs> children across the border. It's the Palestinians are the same. They don't want all this aggravation. It's been political moves like this, and it's all about these large banking facilities that are run by these so-called elites. And then the WHO step in and start saying, oh, you know, you've got to get this, and we need vaccinations, and the whole world is going to... We, we've handed over our sovereignty to the WHO. Again, tactics on distraction about what's about to happen. This is what we're all waking up and, and listening to now. You know, more and more people are saying, this is absolute BS. I'm not listening to this horse shit anymore so iraq in my opinion it it makes total sense because they've probably been one of the longest most publicized country that have suffered the hands of these large walmart and these huge corporations wanting to go in there and destroying their culture again by you know when i was in vietnam john mm. i didn't see a single supermarket i saw small stores everywhere like 7-elevens because there was fruits and vegetables and meat on every street corner and the locals are buying it. Uh, you know, they, they, this mom and pop style industry, you say Vietnam's a communist country, but it was very, very in, in, ingenious how they had the whole thing run. You know, one guy makes tomatoes, he brings them in, so he'll swap it rather than these massive Walmart facilities. What's the other one? What's the other big facility? Uh, Target, for example, Target Costco. building. Yeah, Costco, building that, putting in a lot of rubbish and cheap foods. So it's the only option people can buy. Things have to change. Once Iraq does this, people are going to get really, really like, okay, this is the first sign that things are going to get better. And, you know, we talk about the stock market. The um, people are saying, oh, invest in the stock market, invest in the stock market. But it's not something you can put your hands on, is it? No. A certificate share for Google or, you know, Apple iPhones. You know, what happens when the power goes out? You think these Iraqis are going to be trading phones and, and shares. You know, they got no power. They want tangible things they, 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 can, they can trade with. This is why this whole system of the currency reset, getting everybody back on, it's very believable to me. And I can see that there's movements being played. The chessboard is, is active with all of these situations and distractions going on. So it's, it's super fascinating to watch. It is. And just going back to a couple of key points you made, Dave, um, before. So Zelensky only one kissing up to Biden because he's an actor just like him. They're both exactly actors playing their, their parts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's that's one. And two, you know, you mentioned Vietnam. I was glad you mentioned them because I was going to segue to them next uh, once we covered Iraq, which I think we've done a, a decent job of covering the trajectory <laughs> of, from every possible angle. I, I I like to bottom line it for my audience, and I know you like to as well. You're you're a no fluff guy either. Like, here's what it yeah. is, here's what it's not. Like bottom line stuff, right? Because people don't have time to <clears throat> spend three hours to get you know one percent of gold nuggets. You know they want to get the meat, and I understand because I've been on their side you know, on the other yeah. side of the, the camera as well. So you know with Vietnam, 
interesting. You, you probably already know this, I'm sure. But last week they had one of their largest real estate tycoons. Her name escapes me. She was just arrested for stealing the equivalent of twelve and a half billion dollars. They put her to death. And even the fake news MSM pointed out last week, which you put on Telegram, where everybody can see the repository of documents there, that they are saying they're acknowledging in the fake news that wow, Vietnam is making real steps to removing corruption. So yes. that's a great precursor to me, David, for China Taiwan, because I think once Israel does their grave mistake, I believe China Taiwan is not going to be too far behind. I think we're seeing a domino effect, like we've said before in the shows together. You got, uh, you know, the situation with Israel, then you have China, Taiwan, then you have Zimbabwe coming up this summer, summer with the elections. I don't think that any of that stuff's a coincidence. It's all dominoes falling in a row. It's a big year, big year in the election business. I mean, you asked me a minute, do I think there is going to be an election? Yeah. I'm 50 50 on it, John, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, I don't think that the Democrats can afford to lose so, <laughs> such a huge landslide. It's going to be absolutely decimating to their name. It's going to be embarrassing. So there's only two possibilities. They're going to have to call off the election or they're going to have to just um, withdraw from it. And the last minute, it's like two boxes. You know, they go in before it and they're doing the sparring thing. You say, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to kick your ass. No, you're nothing. I I'm better than you. Sometimes as they get in the ring, you'll see clearly who the dominant fighter is going to be and he'll withdraw halfway through it, you know, or throw the fight. because. If there is an election in the traditional form that we've seen before, the biggest point is, are they going to cheat? Hell yes. They're going to try everything in their power to cheat. But everybody's watching now. You know what? Before you give you give, you, you give them a chance, you give them the, the, the courtesy of the doubt. But now the entire American public is all turned. You know, there aren't any Biden fans. You know, California, maybe there's a few roaming around. But are they really going to vote to continue this torture and expense that they all have to go through? Or are they secretly just going to tell their uh, left wing neighbor? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm voting like that. And then tick the other box. So I would expect if we get to that scene, that stage where there is an actual full election, it's going to be monitored and watched so closely by everybody. But can they afford to do it? It's going to be so embarrassing. You know, that's like um, Mike Tyson going in the ring, ring next to, I don't know, some 70-year-old kid. You know where the money's, <laughs> you know who the winner is. So yeah. that's number one. And number two is, if they do finally release evidence and all of the states say, listen, we've seen enough evidence now of cheating going on in the last election, and um, we think that we're going to have to annul it and void it, then Trump's going to get in that way because they're going to give it to him. And therefore... Um, they don't have to face the public humiliation. They might well go down the line of, okay, you know what, there's some discrepancies here and because of this and because of that, we're going to have to scrap that election and you know we're going to have to give it to the other one because later after the boxing fight, we discovered something and he needs to be disqualified. So now the belt goes to Trump. That's the only other thing I can see happening, John, because the public, the public embarrassment because they'll never, ever, ever get over that. They'll never get over such a, a humiliating defeat. But if they bow, bow out gracefully by saying, okay, we now admit, like last minute, they'll, they won't do it until pretty much last minute. They'll do it in sort of October, maybe, before everybody's going to the polls and say, listen, the election, there was some issues. Uh, there was no cheating, but we've, we've realized now that the machines were faulty or something like that and say, okay, we're going to um, withdraw we admit that we shouldn't have been in power, so now we're going to give it to Trump because they know what's coming. It's all very well saying, come on then, mate, put your hands up. But when you face the ring with Mike Tyson, you're thinking, this shit's got real now. <laughs> so, you know, I don't want to get I don't want to get involved in the fight. That's where my money's going to be on something, an event like that, where they're going to have to just say, I'm really sorry about that. Bit of a mix up on the results. And actually, we think that Trump should have it. It's the only thing well, that makes sense to me. Well, interesting enough to your point, David, is we had our primaries here in California in early March last month, and I I wasn't going to vote, but something in my instinct said, you know, it's my last time here before I leave. Let me just, you know, get a parting shot my way out. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> we had same day results on the elections and Trump won by an absolute landslide in the primaries, which I think was why he did it, was just to do a litmus test to see what kind of reaction he'd get. So to your point, I mean, he's you'd have to have 
an IQ under 10 to believe that he's not going to win in a landslide in this election, number one, yeah. right? To your point, you're also in good company in that espousal of thinking because uh, Bill Holter, who we're going to have on our show next week, and we've had him on our show several times, uh, he was asked the next 22 during Resurrection Day last month, at the end of the month, if he thought there would be elections. He said there's a greater than 50, 50 chance that we won't for a lot of the reasons that you described. Also, what got my, my encouragement, and I'm going to be asking him this next week, which goes back to a little bit about the currencies, just to tie it all together, <clears throat> is uh, Dave finally asked him a question I've been waiting for X-22 to ask for years, um, any of his guests of a financial matter, is he said, so we're going to have a reset of all these currencies uh, then, is what you're saying, when we default on the banks, because that's been his, they, they can't paper their way out of the debt, they're going to have to default. I mean, there's just, you know, <laughs> You're talking a trillion every 90 days and Bill Holter's actual mathematical equation, Dave, just as a recap, has been a while since we're talking about him, is if you paid off the true national debt, it would be somewhere between 250 to 300 trillion because they're manipulating the numbers of unemployment. They're manipulating the deficits. You just said yourself, you're writing you know, in you're writing uh, all kinds of, you know, BS paper bills for Ukraine with no invoices. So there's no system of checks and balances that that that's ballooning to the hilt, right. But he was saying that gold and silver's true value, if it were to pay off the debt, would be in the 125 to 150,000 range with silver being higher, because there's a run on silver, unlike gold, where there's a surplus, right, because we have, we're seeing what the Philippines, what Zimbabwe, what America, what, you know, all these countries have, uh, uh, South America has a lot of it as well, and many countries there. But anyway, uh, he said, yes, we're going to have a reset of all the currencies backed in commodities and natural assets, which is what you and I have been talking about for years. And so it was so great and vindicating to hear somebody like him confirm that. So he's in the same camp with you that he does not think there's going to be an election uh, come November. There's going to be too many things that tick off. I would, I would wonder, Dave, if, in your opinion, if Zimbabwe purposely putting Starlink satellites for the August elections might preempt some copycatting over here in the U.S. as it relates to the U.S. Yeah, so sure, sure. Yeah, the same they're, time. They're, absolutely. They're going to be running um, a test sequence to see if they can actually manage it. Because, look, if they manage to, to screw up the Zimbabwe elections, they're definitely going to be on the top of the game now because... It's like anything. It's a prototype system, so they're going to need to test it. I'm sure that they're very advanced with that testing, but in real life conditions, it's all very well developing a, a car that can go everywhere. But until you until you take it to Alaska in the middle of the winter, is it really going to start? It's the same thing with this. So yes, these satellites going up there and they're monitoring the system and the voting systems that are happening in Zimbabwe because it is a pretty chaotic country, and it is prone to. Um, bullying tactics you know there will be guys out on the street with uh, with rifles and it gets way out of control i mean these countries i'm not saying this is likely in zimbabwe but they have got a history of coups and all of a sudden there's a new military sure. leader with a name that you can't pronounce who looks exactly like the old fella just a slightly different uniform it happens in all of these african countries african countries you know it's like okay i'm going there this week is it going to be dangerous next week i was in egypt a few years ago and while I was in Egypt, the country declared a state of emergency and I couldn't get out. I was heading down to the, the Sudan border to try and sneak out that way. But in the end, we got out and it was over a few bombings in some Christian churches over the period that the, most of the public will know as Easter. We know as Resurrection Day. Hey, it's funny you said that the other day, because that's what I say. Yeah. Happy yeah. Resurrection <laughs> Day. Exactly. But yeah, they blew up a few churches. And, you know, these African countries will overreact and say, right, that's it. Military coup, put the whole country into lockdown, uh, national emergency, state of emergency. But Zimbabwe is going to show, show the world, I would hope, John, that when the elections get there, that it can be operated in an honorly manner and a real manner to show the, the reflection of what the people want. And it's going to open the doors to all the other African countries who've been putting up with this corruption and sneaking around in line to get their own dictators. And most of these dictators are in these countries. have all got links to the CIA or they've got links to MI6 or Israeli Secret Service. They're all put in place for these powers. So these larger um, dominant countries can extract and exploit all of the minerals and wealth that these countries have been producing over the years, the gold, the uranium, the silver, the platinum, the ores, you know, everything. So it's going to be a, a really interesting trial run to see what happens. But 
my money's on on either an election that they're going to have to do a deal with saying, okay, listen, we cannot let the public know that, you know, they'll say, oh, 52% of Trump and, you know, 49 or whatever, 51, 49. It, they, they might try to make it look like, oh, he just scraped in. He just got home with the, you know, with the um, the college vote of, it's a strange political system you have anyway. I don't actually understand it. But, and then we've got, we've got back to Iraq where we know that this the president the current guy that's representing you know sudan he is a good guy he is doing what the people mm -hmm. are looking for him to do the people want their yeah, wealth returned time. yeah they want their wealth returned they want the country sovereignty back they want to govern themselves they don't want a military presence there. And they just want to be left alone the middle east you know Trump was the only guy that stabilized it. Look at the look at the tour he did when he went all around the world. He went to all these major countries. When he went to Saudi, they gave him the sword dance. He shook hands with Kim Jong Un. Nobody yeah. else has ever even done that before. So it's going to be super interesting this whole election question and how it plays out with everything else. And it, again, distraction is the name of the game. We know what happened when Kuwait after the war with Kuwait was the reparations were done. Their currency revalued overnight and up to about three hours before the major people that knew about it would say, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. Mm -hmm. And that that's still in my living memory. I remember when that happened. You were probably very young then, John, when that the Kuwaiti thing. I was 18. Yeah, I, was when... a, I, was, I was a kid back then, but I yeah, yeah I was 18. Hearing, I was 18. I think I saw TV when they were doing the whole desert storm thing with the the tanks and all that. But yeah, I mean, you know, here's the thing, right? Like, Yes, Trump is going to bring peace and prosperity. He's already done it, like you said, in his first term. But the fact of the matter, Dave, is the U.S. hates competition. If they didn't, yeah. they would have let Iraq go a long time ago. Both Trump and whoever this guy is don't want it to happen in the way people think, right? But Sudani is absolutely a good guy. He, he's getting it done. He's, he's moving all the strategic framework. He's doing what Abadi should have done when Abadi was prime minister. And I still think that Abadi is working with the people behind the scenes just to kind of galvanize them because he feels, you know, guilty that he didn't get it done. Sometimes people, when they break their promises, they have an attack of conscience and they want to do everything they can to try to overcompensate. You of know, course. The past, right. And so he's doing his, his best efforts from a civilian standpoint with the people in the streets. But, um, but Sudan is absolutely getting it done. And Israel is, um, we need to be praying for the the true Jews in Israel because we know there's the Kasarian mafia and all yeah, that. Absolutely, but yeah. the true the true Jews, uh, you know, as America, we come from them. And here's the thing: is they are going to actually Iraq. We said this before, David. We need to repeat it because it's important. Iraq has two primary issues: they need to get rid of the U.S. militias and they need to free themselves from the Iranian proxies. Funny you mentioned Iran. Iran's kind of you know being a double agent because they're playing sides with, you know, the, uh, the bricks, but they're also going to try to run to the safety of the U S when they get their nuclear power plants, get blown to smithereens by Israel, because nobody with in their right mind will, will want to mess with the Israelis military. I mean, they're, they're almost second to none really. And they're pretty badass. And yeah. so Israel is going to actually end up helping us along with Russia, going back to Putin, Russia bailed us out of world war II. They're repeating historical replication. Russia is going to help save the world geopolitically and financially. And already we can see that with BRICS. There's no doubt about it. We know that in Ukraine, going back to them, you have Don, Donetsk and Lugansk regions, which are heavily Russian citizens there. He's helping to rebuild the infrastructure, bringing food and water to those people, which, of course, the fake news never wants to talk about because that undermines their whole agenda. So again, that's what I mean. Everything is not what it seems, but Israel is going to play a pivotal role in breaking Iraq apart so that not only Iraq, but Palestine, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, those respective areas will be able to break free from all this corruption and tyranny that's been going on for far too long. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm, I can follow all that logic. <clears throat> What's interesting, John, is the countries we're talking about, you know, do you really think Iraqis are going to a, a, a business and say, okay, I'd like to get some, you know, let's have five kilos of potatoes and some fish and some meat. There's my credit card. Just let me, let me just use the machine and, and debit that from my account. No, these are all cash economies. People use cash. This is why this is very important as well, because Vietnam cash, 
you know they do take cards i was just there a couple of months ago but it was cash everywhere everybody everything i saw going on people paid cash for it um the credit cards were accepted but i didn't see many people using it and iraq is the same you know you've got jordan palestine all of these countries it's all cash you know they pull out wads of cash what's interesting is the currency that's gone through the roof that nobody expected is the um is the afghan the afghani the, the money from afghanistan because the new regime, I use the word Taliban for want of a better word, said no, right? No, 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 no. No more using US dollars. We're not going to use that. We're going to use a local currency. And it's forced the value of it. It's got it's the fastest climbing currency of 2023, 2024. So I mean, I can see the same thing happening in Afghanistan. We haven't talked about that. We're knowing it, we're talking about countries that we can follow the political situation. We just talked about the Vietnam making major political headways by saying, all right, you stole a load of money. It's over, sister. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I'm not sure how they executed. Was she shot or hung? Uh, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I'm not really sure. Thailand's the same. You know, everywhere I went in Thailand, everybody's using cash. And that's another country that doesn't put up with any political bullshit. You know, you you mess up in Thailand, you get caught with a little bit of drugs that you shouldn't have. That's it. You go into jail. If it's a little bit more, that's it. Execution. Doesn't matter what passport you've got, you're in trouble. So yeah. all these countries that we're talking about holding cash, this is why holding cash is so important for these people because they know it's, it's the true value. But um, the stock market to me is just something that I've never got involved with because I don't trust it. So holding on to currencies like we're talking about, the Zimbabwe um, bonds, the Iraqi dinar, mm -hmm. Vietnamese dong, the Thai baht, you know, you know the Venezuelan boulevard. You've got lots of these, these countries that, you know, just getting hold of some of the currency, again, $50, $100, $20. It's a really good investment because once these places do go, you will make money. But at the end of the day, if you're worried... Or if something happens, you think, oh, you know what? That little deal didn't come off. I've got a thousand dollars there in um in Iraqi dinar. You can go and change it. You can get your money back at any time. You yep. know, you, it, it's not a stock because ex stock exchange. You invest. Go try to get your money back. Oh, you know, you need to give us ninety days, and you got to sign this, and let me get the paperwork ready, and you know, and that's not so easy. You know, we've got things that we've got um. We got mortgages and everything, and yeah. Let me just consult. Do you think they're going to ring you back? You ring up your broker and tell me you want money. I guarantee you're going to have to ring them about ten times, and they'll make it as difficult as possible to get the money out for you. You're holding on to cash. All you got to do is say, "I got the money. There you go. I want the local money." It's simple. Yeah, I mean, it's very, it's a very simple, streamlined process, like you said. Um, what other countries, David? I'm curious to get your take. Would you see our emerging countries? Like I'm looking at, for example. El Salvador and Colombia, you know, I think yeah. they, they have a lot of uh, assets in the ground. Uh, El Salvador just paid off their debt, right? And now they're having a 0% tax for other countries to come in and do business. So they're becoming very attractive to work with. Um, so I'm curious what your take is of other countries that people might want to invest in. It's a very good question. I'll tell you, let's talk about El Salvador. I'm glad you brought that up because I lived in Honduras for maybe three, three and a half, four years back in 2008 to 2012, around there. Mm -hmm. And I went to all these countries, the neighboring countries, and Salvador, or El Salvador, was one of the most dangerous places we, you could go to. And people say, well, are you crazy? You know, Nicaragua was another one. But El Salvador now, they've got a new president who's been arresting and detaining and locking up thousands and thousands of gang members. And you've seen them sitting in their very loosely fitting boxer shorts on the floor with their heads down, and the hands behind the back, because he said, listen, there's a zero tolerance to gang activities and narcotic operators. So we're having a zero tolerance because it's making people's lives miserable. So their economy is being boosted by it. Crimes dropped, I think, about 70 percent or more um, since he's done this, this heavy handed attitude. And most of the time, there's no smoke without fire. There's no fire without smoke. Which one is it? Because. The heavily tattooed gang members are saying, oh, man, I'm not in a gang. It's not me. Well, he's got a massive gang sign on the back of his head and right down his neck, you know. So Salvador is mm -hmm. a country that's very interesting because it's a beautiful place. Honestly, like the ground is so mm -hmm. fertile there. You could throw anything. You took you took a, a couple of seeds of grapes or coconuts or whatever you want, threw it in the ground, come back six months later, there you go. 
you wouldn't have to do anything. It's such a fertile country. Nicaragua is another one abused by the West, mainly the US, because it was always used, you know, we got to stop this drug production. Where are the drugs going? They're all going north. Most of this, this is cocaine production is all going into the US because people use it. If you stop using the drug, it drops the market. Nobody wants it. It's valueless. But we know fine well that's a whole other story about how the CIA have been in, manipulating that. But Salvador is a very interesting country. Honduras as well. Again, coffee production. One of the mm. major, major um, commodities, even on the stock market. Coffee, Nicaragua, El Salvador, and Honduras. And then let's talk about going, going south into sort of Uruguay and Paraguay. Again, these countries are... Um, are embracing Bitcoin. I've noticed it's getting easier and easier for them to using Bitcoin. People are saying, hey, this is more feasible than the currencies that we're using. But the corruption is being dealt with slowly at first. Colombia is one of the hardest ones to break because the tentacles of the narcotics industry there go very, very deep. And it's been influencing the, the political systems for the last 50 years, really, since the 70s. So, um, unless you're going to get a very radical leadership in there to tackle the drugs and tackle the gangs activities, then it's going to take quite a while to do it. But Salvador, very interesting place because of what the president's doing. Argentina. This is another one. My son has been to Argentina six times. He goes for a month, two months, leaves, says, Oh, I'm going to go back. Says it's great. But their, their currency now, the, uh, the chief in charge of Argentina no, has, has no told way. the National Bank, what's his name again? Javier Malay. Yeah, yeah. He's he's more or less, he's gone into the central bank of, of Argentina said, listen, no more of this inflation stuff. You know, we're going to get this under control mm -hmm. because if you go to Argentina with dollars in your pocket or euros or pounds, you get double from a black market exchange place than you do from taking money out using your debit card or credit card from a bank machine. It's, yeah, 80% more or something. My son was doing something with, he took cash with him and he says, yeah, I'll just change it up with this local little lock, locratorium, they call them, like an internet store. And again, it's all cash. This is why you've got you to be sitting on cash because it's the only thing right. that, that you can actually get your hands on that you could trade easily. Yeah, gold is great, but you can't go in with a bar of gold and say, oh, I'm going to snap it off a bit. You know, this is why I love, I love these currencies for people to get in on an investment level and it doesn't take a lot of money or snobbery or paperwork or bullshit. People just lying to you. Oh, you know, it's gone up and you know, what are you happening? And Coca-Cola is new and there's a new Pepsi war coming on. We lost 25 containers of Apple phones and now the Chinese have copied it and, it's just too versatile. This is why what we're talking about, grabbing yourself some currencies from these countries that we're talking about and just sitting on them is one of the easiest things you can do. And at the end of the day, you've got it in your drawer at home or buried in the back garden. You've got it if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's you pretty much pretty much covered the whole gamut right there. Um, okay. Any any last thoughts you have for uh No, I'm I'm just day? I'm I'm just checking if I had any notes on there. I think we've covered it really, John, because um, we've now set it up nice and easy for people. We've been working with uh, with this program that are able to get these foreign notes no matter what country you're in. So we're going to put the link below. If you want to get involved and get yourself some currencies, just click the link. It's a very easy system to do. They'll send them registered to wherever you are in the world. And we've all bought them. John, you've got them. I've got them. I'm most, every, I tell you what, everybody in my circle that's working on this truth movement and talking about this, they all have them. And if they tell you they haven't got them, they're liars because they've got them. Or they did have them and lost them or cashed them in or something. But it's um, the only thing we haven't really talked about is the Zimbabwe bonds. So we probably need a couple of minutes on that. The bond notes, yeah? Well, again, as I said <clears throat> earlier, I think I, I think we did cover it, but I'll be happy to cover it again, that uh, the Zim bonds are are now being, as we confirmed this week, as of Tuesday, they've been, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, they've been, rolled into the zig dollars that are going gold so chamisa yeah. has said publicly when he gets back everything is going to get bundled in one note everything will be treated one and the same so they they will go all at the same time because I, I had a question somebody brought up the other day it was it was it was cute but also kind of a strange question to me like 
So shall we go redeem the Zim? How are you going to do that? Iraq hasn't even gone yet. Like nobody's yeah, gone yeah. yet. So nobody's going to stand in front of a bank and say, I'm here to redeem my Zim because they said the Zig's going. No, it's not going to work. Everybody will know when this happens. It's not going to be a mystery. The financial markets will report it. It'll be all over the internet. We'll let people know. I'm sure you'll let your people know, your, te- your followers know likewise. It's not going to be some secretive thing. When you change the totality of, of a country's financial fortunes, there's no way to hide that. That has to come out in the open. You can always check the Forex too. That stuff is all posted on the Forex. A lot of banks have 800 numbers that you can call and get a, a, a currency. You know, you just type in the first couple of digits of the country like Vietnam, you know, VIT or VIET, and it will pop up what the dong is trading at at that moment. So it's not going to be some, some big cloak and dagger mystery. But yes, yeah. as far as the Zim goes, they're going to be tied to the Zig dollars and they'll all go under gold. Uh, they'll be treated one the same. That's super good to hear that. The One last point that we've never actually talked about is um, sure. the current set where we, we're speaking about, one of the biggest questions is uh, where can I get them and how do I know that I'm getting authentics? Because there's a lot of people out there that are saying, I don't know what I'm buying because it's such a strange different currency. If you're sitting in Omaha or somewhere, you know, in the States and saying, well, I've never even really been, I've been to Florida, that's it. This is why we've set up this link below to work with a specific group of people and all of the notes that they're supplying, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. So if you want to buy some Zims, they'll know what you're talking about because the Zims have got a very specific range it's a, a serial number range and a year range from 2008. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what it is. 2008 and triple, yeah, triple series. Yeah. Double A. Double so, A. Double A series. There you go. Um, and this is why we've said, okay, listen, we're going to talk about this and educate people about this. We need to make sure that there's an a, a revenue avenue for them to securely get notes that are authentic, that are the right ones, because some of the old Zim notes out there, they are still floating around. People put them up on eBay. You think, oh my God, that's cheap, but they're the wrong ones. So guys, if you need any more information, the link below will take you to it everywhere. And all of that information is there. Just click it, click, click the button below and you'll see what we're talking about. I think we're done, John. Have you got anything else you want to add on that? I do. Thank you. There's a very important uh, two points, I think, David, to what you just said to mop up and just kind of you know cover the bases nicely. Um, you can tell you're getting authentic currency because it comes with a certificate of authenticity and a receipt, mm-hmm. which you, I always recommend to my people to, when they go to make their bank appointments, bank appointments, just bring that with you. They may or may not want it, but you just want to cover your butt and have it. And they're going to run it through what's called a Deluware machine, which is a French machine, which just, it has um, black lighting within the machine that tests all the security features. I also recommend everybody to order themselves a black light. You can do it at home, plug it in and it just, you could darken the room or just wait till, you know, sundown and just run each one of the notes and you'll see specific watermark features. Like the Zim bonds have these yellow striations on the back where uh, I believe it's the rupiah, the whole note lights up with Vietnam. It's just the back of it. And same with the dinar. And you'll, you'll notice these demarcations when you do that a little simple test, right? But getting the yeah. paperwork is good. And there's a very important point, David, that I say for the people in the cheap seats, because a lot of people have selective hearing, you know, they hear what they want to hear, right? You know, what tickles their ears instead of like practical common sense, which is what we're here to do, is everybody's focused on, uh, you know, the banks and the redemption centers and the 800 numbers. And we've already given our take on that, right? But there's a whole side that people are not considering. The dealers that you buy it from, in our case, if you get it from us, they, they also, in addition to selling it to you, they'll buy it back from you. So you'll have a bidding war on your hands. You'll have the banks and you'll have the currency here in America, treasury backed dealers that will, will buy it back, right? And so you've got options. So just make sure that when it comes time to exchange, take your time, use discernment and exercise all of your options. Don't just leap. Make sure that you think critically in this process. Yeah, that's good advice. And I've, I totally forgot about this certificate of authenticity. It is important that because it gives you a reference of where you got it from. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, we don't know if they're going to ask it. I'm sure there's, there's going to be some instances where they just want to see, you know, you know how some banks are. They want to see your ID and a passport and then something else and then a DNA test and <laughs> bring your mom along. <laughs> right. Like trying to get it's like trying to get a free tab in a bar. You know what I mean? They're not easy to open anymore. <laughs> no. 
No. But John, great show and great inter interesting intel from what you've been tracking. And again, folks, I hope that helps you make some decisions. If this is something that you find could be of interest, we've provided all the links below, which is going to give you more information. And all you're going to do is click on the link and they'll take you to it and make it very, very easy. John, we'll be back in a month, more or less. We seem to do one every four or five weeks, no one of these. Yes, sir. I look forward to it. And thanks for all of your geopolitical contributions. It really helps. <laughs> My pleasure, mate. We'll speak very soon. Thanks, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Take care.